Amnesty International has released a report which says attacks on Muslim women in Austria increased by 74 percent from 2017 to 2018. Austria has a far-right chancellor who's spoken regularly about what he calls the problem of migration and also the values of Islam and their effects as he sees them on European culture. Let's speak to Farid Hafez. Farid is a lecturer and researcher at the University of Salzburg and joins us from Vienna. Farid, thank you very much indeed for your time. Shall we pick up on the politics of Austria? How much do you think this uh, finding from Amnesty is due to the discourse of the country's leaders? Well, I, I absolutely agree with uh, the findings of Amnesty International, and this is also what my research has uh, told me f throughout the last few years. Uh, even before the far right has come to power, uh, there has been a strong anti-Muslim discourse in the Austrian public. Uh, also, we have witnessed uh, since the right wing is now in power, a number of legislation that is primarily focusing and targeting uh, Muslim women and Muslims in general. Um, so it is of no wonder that uh, this has a pay, pay, effect uh, in the daily life of Muslim people on the streets. Have you seen the report? Because it goes into some detail about the nature of different sorts of Islamophobic attacks. People have been attacked on social media platforms, but that's one thing. And clearly nobody wants to be victimized for their personal beliefs. But your physical danger is something that people, some people might take that more seriously, right? If someone comes up to you with a knife, obviously that's more difficult to deal with than someone denigrating you for your religion. How safe is Austria for Muslim women? Well, I think, I mean, to be honest, I think this is a general problem that is occurring throughout uh, the Western Hemisphere. The question is, like, how much civil society organizations do you have that speak out, that document this kind of work? And this is what uh, where the Austrian uh, NGOs were uh, successful in, be it uh, Amnesty International and the Dokustelle, uh, which is documenting uh, anti-Muslim hate crimes since three years now. So I, I think this is just the effect of a growing sense of harassment that people are now standing up, they are trying to organize themselves. But to be honest, I mean, take Germany for one, for one example. Uh, every third day, in average, a, a mosque is attacked. Uh, so this is nothing, I would say, very unique to Austria. But what we can definitely see, and I think that's a very specific aspect in the Austrian context, is that you see on the street people attacking, especially Muslim women, by referring to the far right in power, because they feel empowered and backed by the discourse that is uh, uh, that is uh, supported by the political elite. So uh, we have numerous cases where Muslim women on the street were attacked, and then uh, the perpetrator would say, for instance, like something like, uh, "Well, uh, now you won't be in the country for long because we have now the far right in power, uh, the Freedom Party, and they will kick you out anyway." Or people saying like taking uh, the headscarf from the, from a woman and arguing, uh, well, now when our president will be in power, you will have to take it off anyway. So I, I think this is this very specific relationship of a very outspoken um, uh, anti-Muslim political party being now in power, and this is legitimizing. Uh, hate crime on the on on the grassroots level. This is what I see as a very specific uh, characteristic of the current situation in Austria. You know, while you're talking to us, we're showing pictures uh, of uh, public action. Uh, we know that uh, NGOs like Amnesty are working towards trying to minimize uh, hate crime, but you're talking about the politics. In Italy, there's an anti-immigrant uh, coalition. In Holland, in the Senate just a few weeks ago, a far-right party gained enough seats to affect governance in the Netherlands. Uh, you've got Hungary, of course. Everybody knows about Viktor Orban, how much he literally hates migrants. You've got a president in the United States who people say doesn't like people coming from certain Muslim countries. From what you're saying, it seems as if whatever public action is taken and however much NGOs try to work with civil society, it actually won't make any difference until the people at the very top decide that they need to be setting the example. Would that be fair enough? Um, yes, I definitely agree. I think it uh, depends a lot 
on how the political elite reacts. And uh, let me give you an example for the case of Austria. Uh, when in Austria, <clears throat> uh, about uh, nine months ago, seven mosques were uh, were closed, uh, arguing by the government that these mosques are spreading political Islam, uh, the political opposition was just saying, uh, quote unquote, this is the first reasonable initiative of this government. So we see uh, even on the behalf of the opposition, there is really uh, a lot more to do, uh, to say it uh, um, uh, frankly. Um, on the other side, um, as since you, you mentioned the United States, in the United States, the Democratic Party or large parts, uh, at least from the left side of the Democratic Party, are standing up against Islamophobia. Even Republicans are standing up against Islamophobia. In Austria, the case is a bit different, because in Austria, um, <clears throat> the anti-Muslim discourse is quite hegemonic. There is no opposition on behalf of the opposition parties, or very few, to say at least. And uh, even when we speak about the NGOs, uh, that the fact that Amnesty International has spoken out uh, uh, yesterday um, and the number of other anti-racist uh, uh, anti organizations have done so is a very new phenomenon. We have seen a lot of silence within the last one and a half years, and that there is definitely much more room um, for anti-racist activity. And yes, I fully agree. Um, it depends on how and on, on what uh, um, on, on what decision political elite makes. If they accept that anti-Muslim racism can become legislation, can be accepted in terms of the political discourse or not. And in, in terms of Austria, because you mentioned the Netherlands, for instance, there is again a difference because in the Netherlands and in throughout Western Europe, many far-right political parties are gaining support, are gaining seats in parliament, but they may not as few examples like uh, Italy and Austria, be directly in power, be the chancellor, the prime minister or the vice prime minister. Okay. Farid Hafez, really appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us on TRT World.